1400 years ago, a humble merchant who could not read or write changed the face of Arabia. His name was Muhammad. Today, his influence has spread to every corner of the world, including the United States. This is his story, and the story of millions of Americans who revere him as God's final prophet. Major funding for Muhammad, Legacy of a Prophet, has been provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the David and Lucille Packard Foundation, Arabian Bulk Trade, Sabadia Family Foundation, the El Hibri Foundation, the Irfan Katwari Foundation, and Mir Imran. Additional funding has been provided by many other organizations and individuals. He was neither tall and lanky, nor short and heavy set. When he looked at someone, he looked them in the eyes. He was the most generous hearted of men, the most truthful of them in speech, the most mild tempered of them, and the noblest of them in lineage. Anyone who would describe him would say, I never saw before or after him the like of him, Muhammad, described by a contemporary. Muhammad was a man who faced an absolutely hopeless situation. There was a whole continent, virtually, of people killing one another in an endless, hopeless vendetta, going down a chute of violence and warfare, feeling that society was coming to an end and had no hope. He gave them hope single-handedly. In a space of 23 years, he brought peace and new hope to Arabia and a new beacon for the world. Islam, the religion Muhammad first brought to Arabia, now claims 1.2 billion followers around the world. There are an estimated 7 million Muslims in America, where it is the country's fastest growing religion and the most diverse. Like America itself, the Muslims in this country come from all over the world. They have a common bond, not only in their religious faith and in their mosques, but in this story of Muhammad, they all look to it. This is the source of how to behave, of how to be a constructive citizen, of how to be a good parent, of how to be a good child, of how to seek knowledge and truth. These are values that are expressed most clearly for Muslims in the story of Muhammad. In the Quran, Allah says that Muhammad is the best example of behavior for you. And that's what he is, the guide for the way we deal with each other. And when we're in a position of authority, how we attempt to implement justice and law. The prophet Muhammad, he asked the question to people around him. Do you love your creator? Serve your fellow man first. What does that tell you? It tells you Forget about all this intellectual, yeah, I love God and this and that. If you're gonna, you know, forget about talking the talk, walk the walk. You wanna serve God, serve people. What more noble way to serve people than to risk your own life to save them? September 11th has 
changed the whole world. And it has also put the Muslim community in the spotlight. How about the dub installation? Is this dub Muslims have a lot of hostility being hurled at them. But this is also a time of transformation. Many people are very eager to understand Islam and want to know who is the Prophet, what is the Quran, who are the Muslims, how do they live? Through the stories about Prophet Muhammad, we were able to make connections. And all of a sudden, you would feel that you could relate to things that happened 1,500 years ago, and that the issues weren't old-fashioned. They were universal. And that's what he's taught me. This is the story Muslims have passed down from generation to generation for 1,400 years. A story about the merchant, husband, father, statesman, and warrior, whom they consider the final prophet. The man whose legacy continues to shape their lives today. The life of Muhammad is, even in its details, probably better known than any other major religious figure before modern times. His followers made careful efforts to record memories that they had of things that he had said and things that he had done. Many of these traditions may have been made up later on, but at the core, there seems to me to be little reason to doubt that there is a picture and a portrait of a living man. According to Muslim sources, Muhammad bin Abdullah, or son of Abdullah, was born in the year 570 in the city of Mecca in what is today Saudi Arabia. A poet of the times described Mecca as a place where winter and summer were equally intolerable. The world into which Muhammad arrived was a brutal one, defined by hunger, violence, and tribal warfare. You could not exist without your tribe. An individual in this dangerous world had absolutely no chance of survival. And that meant that the tribe had become perhaps the most sacred value in Arabia. It's a society that's based on the idea of vigilantism, that if somebody attacked my clan, then I have a right to go and attack anyone from his clan. They saw justice as taking revenge. The Arabs of the sixth century had no written code of law, no common religion, and no central government. In this dangerous world, Muhammad had the good fortune to be born into Mecca's powerful tribe, the Quraysh. But his father died before he was born, and his mother died when he was only six. His uncle, Abu Talib, was left to raise the young orphan. He surely had to have worried about his, his future, what will he be? And so he, he must have been a very introspective child. Muhammad had the habit of going out in the desert and contemplating the stars and thinking about why he was an orphan and how would life be to him in the future. Orphans were marginal people, and he felt very, very strongly identified with the poor and disadvantaged for the rest of his life. The Mecca of Muhammad's youth was both a religious and a commercial center, located at the crossroads of two major trading routes. Pilgrims came from all over Arabia to worship the hundreds of idols that surrounded the Kaaba, an ancient shrine in the heart of the city. The Kaaba was surrounded by a sacred area where fighting was not allowed. The commerce generated by the pilgrims made it possible for a young man in Muhammad's circumstances to make a living in the markets of Mecca. Uh, 